Welcome friends, my name is Michelle and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be exploring the transition options that Canva has for your videos. So let's go check them out. So you have a bunch of videos, maybe videos and pictures mixed together like I do here. So I have a video, a picture, a video, a picture, a video, a picture. But I don't want them kind of like jumping from one to the next being like bam into the next one so how do i do that so what you want to do is you come down and you see this little like arrow type thing it's your transitions so we have all different types of transitions so let's go and see which each one of them do so you have a dissolve effect so what you want to do is then you try your dissolve and it'll just melt into the next picture the other thing you have with all these transitions is a duration so if you wanted to slowly dissolve into the next one, you can cut this up. So let's cut it up all the way and see the difference in the dissolve from this video into this photo. So it melds right into the next video. You also have slide. So we can go here and let's add the slide one onto this one and see what that does. So we can slide and it'll go slide over. And the same thing here, you can go turn it up you can have it come from the bottom you can come from each side it's all up to you and it's still free it's still free it doesn't have a little crown on it yay so let's try the next one which is the circle wipe let's go in here add a transition let's try the circle wipe and see what that does oh that looks cool and then uh, what we can do is you can go in or you can go out in out in out and like with all of them, you can change the seconds. Now here is a tip. So if you're do, doing like transition, so you're having like a video photos, um, what you want to do so you can lengthen your transition. So if you have something that's very, very small, let me add like two little teeny pictures here. Let's go into my photos real quick and just grab the first two things that pop up if anything pops up because canva or either my computer is extremely slow which could be my computer but you know so let's grab like two pictures put them to the background and do another one and snag another one so so i want to do these say but i don't want them for five seconds so i got them really short so if you notice Let's go in here and do a, uh, let's do a line. Let's look at the color wipe. So the color wipe, you can change the colors in the color wipe. You can change the directions of which way you want the color wipe to go. And go in here and change that to the gray or whatever colors you want to and just change the colors over. But also with your timing, if you notice something with your timing, if I stretch, start stretching, stretching these out, then your timing should be able to get bigger and you you can get more seconds so if you need a longer transition stretch these out to so you can have more purple on there um, if they're real short you're only going to be able to do a short duration with your transition that's in any transition all of these transitions are the same so you line wipe you can go in different directions up down sideways and all for free let's try a little flow action let's see what the flow will do let's go in between something like that looks cool let's uh let's do these two um let's do flow um your flow is going in oh no it's still circle wipe and we want to look at flow baby flow flow is going in so flow i don't know I don't know how I feel about the flow. I don't know how I feel about the flow, y'all. So let's let's look at it. And play in. I think flow is better when you have elements. So if you have elements in your pictures or text, so let's try that. All right, let's put up some uh, text and see. So I think flow is better if you have like text and elements in there. So let's you could throw that up there. Let's throw one of those up there. Let's throw some like elements, random elements, who cares what they are, uh, whatever these graphics are. So now we've got some graphics in here and let's see if the flow is different. I think that's what the flow is more 
is more for, yeah, there you go. So the flow is more for, for your elements moving versus your picture. So it'll flow your elements from one to the other. So let's try it when they're coming in. Let's put flow on this one so we can see that transition. And let's look at that one and see what that does when it comes in with the flow. And everything kind of flows in. It's kind of, it it's, reminds me of animating your page when you animate your whole page. Uh, so let's go here. We don't have a little transition in here. Let's go for the next one is stack. So your stack is up, down, up, down, up, down. This would be probably video, pretty good for videos that are mostly pictures and you just want to kind of stack them. And then the other thing, of course, everything's got its time and your chop. Kind of like the chop, which direction you want to go, what angle it's coming up and down from. So those can lively up your thing. So here's the, the special sauce right here is your match and move. I use match and move for animation. It is not really a transition for like a video per se. It is more for animation. So if I wanted to take my text, let's go here. I want to take some text. I want to put it here and I want this text to move from here. I'm going to duplicate anything you use in a match and move. Duplicating the page is usually your best option. And I want it to go from here to here. So I want that movement. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to do a match and move. And I want it to go pretty slow. So that's how that can move. And I have plenty of videos on my channel that shows you how to do different techniques with match and move to do all kinds of different animations involving match and move. So that's more of an animation tool than really like a um, transition to me. And so that is something if you want to explore, go through my channel. There's a lot of stuff that's been made with match and move. Um, and some of it's kind of neat. So that's up to you. And that is all the transitions. I will give you one tip when it comes to transitions. A lot of times, if you notice when you put a transition in, especially if you're using video, it will shave like a little bit of timing off. So if you're using a video that has voice to it, please remember to once you do that transition to go back in there and make sure that the voice isn't screwed up you might have to add that little smidge of that second back on because it will a lot of them will cut that off so it will take a little bit from the back end and a little bit from the front end when you go in between them so if you have any kind of voice that you're trying to keep on there please remember to Go back and listen carefully and add that little bit back on. All you have to do is go here and you have to just pull. Just pull it back out. If it shortens it up, just pull it back out and just pull it back out on the other side till it matches back up and then you're good. Um, most of the time that will do that. And another good tip when you're using transitions is if it's like photos or something like that might not have any sound behind it yet. Another thing is do not set your timing until after your transitions have been put in. So once you put your transitions in, then you can go set your timing for everything. That way you know it's the timing you set and not you put five seconds on them and then you put the transitions in and now they're like 4.8 or 4.7 and they're not five anymore. So if you do that after you've done your transitions and set your timing, it's a whole it, it helps out a whole lot. So I hope these were cool for you to look at. And the other thing is, I hope you, I gave you some good tips to help you out when it comes to transitions and scope through my channel if you want to and learn some kind of cool tricks with match and move. So thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Much love. I'll see you on the next one.